Hi everybody, welcome to the Sounders FC Studios. I'm Matt Gashk alongside the voice of the Sounders, Arlo White. And it's a big weekend for the Sounders FC with the Chicago Fire in town. Yeah, and it's in more ways than one. I mean, everyone's talking about Freddie Lundberg's return, and this is significant. I think this is a sign that the Sounders uh, franchise is maturing. I think it's a sign that the league is maturing. You've got this wonderful storyline, the first designated player ever to be traded mm. between two teams. Sounders fans are fond of Freddie Lundberg for the great service he put in for this club. Freddie Lundberg is, is very fond of his time uh, and proud of his time yeah. in Seattle and, and what he achieved here. Seattle are unbeaten in six games since he left, or at least since he was... Uh, since he last played. played. Yeah, since he had the ankle injury against, uh, against LA on July the 4th. Uh, and he's in great form since he's got to Chicago, so everybody's happy. Mm -hmm. I think this is a wonderful occasion. I think we should celebrate it. His image is on the season tickets as well. That's almost <laughs> serendipitous, wasn't it? And it just adds to, to, to the flavour. But what we shouldn't overlook in all this hype of Freddie's return is the fact that this game has massive playoff implications. Now, the Sounders are in seventh place in the top eight. 29 points from 21 games. Chicago is surging despite a 4-3 defeat last week at Houston, and we'll look at that in a second. 24 points from 18 games, so they've got the games in hand. The Sounders could really enhance their playoff prospects with a victory and really dent Chicago's. Mm -hmm. So the subplot is there. This is a massive game on so many different levels. Well, we've seen Freddie Lundberg. What do we expect from the rest of the Chicago team? Well, I think a high-tempo game. They've got mm -hmm. some very skilled players, Lundberg being one of them, obviously. Niarko's a very good player. Papa's a very good player. I think they'll, they'll play a 4-2-3-1 formation. Lundberg just in behind a main striker, who we expect to be Brian McBride. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's no spring chicken anymore. Right. Um, what a great warrior he's been down the years. Um, it may be that uh, their coach goes for somebody else, but essentially they play one up top with Lundberg uh, just behind. So that's going to be an interesting tactical battle. Mm -hmm. um, I want to stress something that we've been talking about all season when we look at game film here. Defending from the mm -hmm. from attack is something that Sounders have improved upon massively as the season's progressed. Let's take a look at a recent game that Chicago played. It was at uh, home against the New England Revolution. Conde, who's the centre half, has been dispossessed there by Perovic, who really chased him down. Conde won't play at Questfield, he's suspended. But let's have a look at the replay here. Look, he's in possession, he's dwelling a bit, but Perovic is all over him. And it leads to, uh, to Conde uh, slipping. Perovic still with plenty of work to do, and he does very well indeed to slide that ball in to, in to finish the chance. Defend from attack, put centre halves under pressure. It's something that Mon Montero's doing well, mm -hmm. uh, Blaze is doing well. Son and Ayassi is working like a Trojan on the right-hand side at the moment, to really putting pressure on their, their uh, defenders. So it just means they don't have any time to set themselves up and start playing the ball around. And, and then you can capitalise on mistakes like yeah. that. And if it, if it can happen with Wilman Conde too, yeah. we should point out, he's one of the better defenders in this league. If Absolutely. it can happen to him, it can happen to anyone. And, and if you're looking at Wilman Conde's backup in that position, it even, even further uh, puts the importance of defending from a Yeah, team. and they might play Cigaris, who's, who's a decent right. a decent centre-half, but not as good as Conde, right. so there might be a, a slightly weak area. Do you remember early in the season, Matt, when we welcomed the New England Revolution, we talked mm. all about the fact they had Bobby Shuttleworth in goal, a rookie goalkeeper, and in a way I felt sorry for him because the shots that night in the first half of those three goals just blazed past mm -hmm. him into the top corner of, of the net, didn't they? But there's that one instance when he right. allowed that back pass to go under his feet and he sort of betrayed his own nerves mm -hmm. on that occasion. I think he just put the, 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 the wobbles in his, mm -hmm. his defence in front of him. Well, there is a rookie goalkeeper in net for the Chicago Fire, a guy called Sean Johnson. He's won the MLS Save of the Week twice. Right. And here's an example of what he can do. He's a very agile, athletic goalkeeper. Shalry Joseph, New England Revolution, great save by Sean Johnson. But he is a rookie, and with that comes mistakes. Uh, later on in the Revolution game, free kick comes in, penalty area, it's dangerous, he completely loses it, and does actually very well to recover, right. to prevent Joseph stabbing the ball into the net, but he shouldn't be juggling it in the first place. Houston, last week, a 4-3 defeat for the Chicago Fire. Look at this, corner comes in, does really well to claim it, but then the impact on the ground, he injures himself, the ball just rolls out of his grasp and it's put in the net by by Brian Ching, the first of three goals for Ching. You wait till you see one of the goals oh, in wow. a minute that he scores. But bear in mind that Ching was closed down completely by, uh, by Seattle. But look at this, he claims it well. It's, it's hard, but at this level, you've got yeah. to keep hold of the ball or at least get rid of it out right. of the area if you're injured. You know? So he'll learn, he'll learn a lesson from that. Uh, we take it forward. This is the one I was talking about. Look how Johnson completely mis misjudges that corner kick. Look at that from Ching. Unbelievable. Wow. <laughs> Overhead kick into the net. This was a wild game. Really 3-1 up. 
uh, Houston. But you know, great overhead kick. But what a wild misjudgment mm. by Sean Johnson on the on the corner mm. kick. So let's put him under pressure. Let's shoot early. Let's shoot often. Let's follow in every shot because he's a rookie. It's going to be a very good goalkeeper, mm -hmm. but he may feel the nerves. Now the big story of the day: the return of Freddie Lundberg. We've seen him before. How yeah. has he played with this Chicago team? Well, he's been playing very well. I've spoken to Nate Jaker about him, a former Chicago Fire player, of course. Right. That's where he started his career. He said he's uh, been on the phone to a couple of his old mates who say they're delighted to have Freddie there. Uh, he's playing very well. And as we stated earlier, everyone seems to be happy with this trade. Let's just get a few examples of what mm -hmm. he's been doing uh, in recent times. He plays this ball out to Carr, look, on the left-hand side. So Carr's got a bit of a run here at the right back for, for New England. And look, if we pause it there, look at this lung-busting run from Freddie Lundberg coming into your picture. We'll pause it again. So he's taken out the central midfielder here. He's created a lovely little bit of space here for Carter to run into. This, this is a slightly fortunate finish. Let's play mm -hmm. it on. He doesn't really connect, but he catches right. the goalkeeper sort of wrong-footed. But that was a good decoy run by Freddie Lundberg, who's obviously enjoying his football at Toyota Park. We'll take it forward to the next clip. Uh, against Houston in this wild game. Look, a lovely little probing ball here to Carr. Think about all the chances we were missing at the start of the season. <laughs> Look at this. Onstad. Allows the ball to go underneath <laughs> it. That's a soft goal, really. But really? it's an assist for Freddie. And we'll take it forward to, to the next one because he had quite a prolific game in this, uh, in this, in this game. Nice little turn in. Um, you can't believe this oh comedy defending from Houston. You know, I mean, they're, they're <laughs> such a good team, full of great veteran players. But that's uh, Brian Boswell, who Bobby Boswell, Bobby Boswell, me, right? Um, who, who puts the ball past on that into his own net. But it was a nice little ball from Freddie into a danger area, making a centre half face his own goal. Uh, we'll see it there again. And Nyarko is in on the scene. You know, I mean, it was it was poor defending by mm -hmm. Houston on the day, but Freddie at least was doing the probing. 75 corners taken in a, in a rave green jersey this season, no goals, and wouldn't you believe it, he crosses one in and there's Conde, who again won't be playing at Questfield to plant it in the back of the net. So, you know, it wasn't as if Freddie was delivering brilliant balls every right. time, you know, there was some execution problems, delivery problems, but it just so often happens when, when players go to new teams, they find a resurgence in form, mm -hmm. they're keen to impress, uh, and he's had that sort of bounce back from joining uh, and getting a sort of a fresh environment, I suppose, mm -hmm. at, at Chicago. He's going to be up for it. Yeah. I hope the crowd, and I'm sure they will, oh, give right. a magnificent reception, which he deserves. Once the whistle goes, gloves are off everybody. Right. You know? And he'll expect that. He went back uh, to Arsenal with West Ham mm -hmm. two or three years ago. He only sp spent 35 minutes on the field from the start, so I assume he was injured. I'm hoping to talk to him before the game and find out exactly what went on there. But he's used to going back to his old clubs. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it, it won't phase him. He'll be keen to impress. Um, but obviously, we know how good he is, so he needs to be watched. Absolutely. It's going to be a great game. Should be a lot of fun ever at Quest Field. It's a 7.30 kickoff on Kong 616, also on 97.3 Cairo That's FM. Right. Mm -hmm. And we we'll, can catch the game. Uh, we'll have updates right here on SoundersFC.com. This has been your scouting report for our Hello White, I'm Matt Gashk. Thanks for joining us. Ah, New York. Just the city I was looking for. And I can get there on the 815 for not bad. I should buy now. Next up, Yankees tickets. Bing.